dear friends welcome to this edition of uh, uh, vbs histo med a series of e learning videos basically they are self learning modules posted on internet uh, on various topics in gross and histology now today's topic is on um, lung part 2 that means Uh, we have already covered lung part one, a few introductory concepts, uh, among which we gave a overview of the bronchus, intrapulmonary bronchus. From there, we will continue into the second part. Here, the focus is on the next stage of the um, branching tree, broad tracheobronchial tree. That's the bronchiole. So I have called it as the V's of the bronchioles. now this photograph at the back is to hint you that when you look at the development of the lung it finally more or less coincides with the glandular architecture that's why here also we have lobe lobules similarly ducts and smaller ducts and things like that so the same pattern appears to be there but there are some specific uh, regional modifications just keep that in mind because this kind of a photograph uh, i have shown in salivary glands pancreas etc i am dr bala subramanyam i work here as a professor in the department of anatomy uh, at st john's medical college bangalore india now you see this slide gives you a summary of the branching pattern of the tracheobronchial tree okay trachea is out of this discussion the intrapulmonary bronchus and thereafter several generations of branching finally a stage comes when we start with the bronchiole roughly about 1 mm in diameter bronchiole then terminal bronchiole respiratory bronchiole alveolar ducts alveolar sacs and finally the alveoli now this is the pattern this is just to recap this is uh, the diagrammatic version of uh, what you see as a histology slide uh, it 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 gives you a more uh, detailed uh, it gives you finer details we will we'll go into the details one by little by little now bronchiole we identify this in, uh, in the lung on one important criteria see remember in the bronchus the presence of islands of hyaline cartilage was noteworthy a stage comes when all the cartilages disappear and there is only the mucosa and a ring of uh, um, smooth muscle i mean reasonably thick layer of smooth muscle is of course there now this is important at this stage where the disappearance of the cartilage pieces or islands uh, clearly suggests the next stage of the bronchial uh, branching that's called the bronchiole you see there are two photographs here one is a cross section of the bronchiole the other one is a, a slightly oblique i would say a more a longitudinal section of the bronchiole let's see the detail the lining epithelium of the mucosa is uh, continues to be the same typical epithelium uh, of the respiratory tree namely the pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium remember this is the same in the bronchus also there is no change as far as this is concerned note because it is ciliated columnar the mucociliary rejection current transports particulate material like carbon and other things it pushes towards the trachea that's why it helps in the cough uh, process where the sputum is thrown out next um nothing else as far as the mucosa is concerned nothing specific about uh, the connective tissue in the lamina propria but the muscle that is there which is a very signature part of the bronchiole the thick layer of muscle 
it appears circular in in this photograph it is not necessarily so the point is this architecture is spiralized architecture that means there will be one or two layers of the muscle running in spirals and it's believed that there is another uh, group of uh, um, smooth muscles which run in the opposite direction you know the spiral in the opposite that means there are two spirals uh, contrasting with each other in, in the direction now this this spiral architecture is responsible for bronchoconstriction and bronchodilatation now this word needs a little clarification bronchoconstriction and dilatation in the in the context of this muscle activity spiralized muscle is it only not only reduces the lumen or increases the lumen depending upon whether it is constriction or uh, dilatation it also alters the length of the bronchiole because of the spiralized nature so in other words to some extent the length of the bronchiole is also affected because of the bronchoconstriction the mucosa uh, adjacent to the lumen is thrown into folds in the event of bronchoconstriction now this is very very important because this in addition to the, the muscle itself reducing the lumen size by making the mucosal folds uh, also additionally adds to the reduction of the uh, lumen size this is a important point physiologically however there are pathological conditions about which we will discuss in the future slides but say a condition like uh, asthma chronic asthma etc there is additional element where you know right below the mucosa uh, there is a high vascular area a plexus is there immediately below the um, mucosa now that vascular plexus uh, go undergoes uh, hypertrophy in the event of asthmatic pathology now that adds to the um, problem of reduction of mucosa because when in the event of an acute stage of asthma these vessels dilate and there is local edema there that further constricts the lumen just remember that this is a third uh, possibility uh, that should be kept in mind now this photograph gives you a better picture of what we have discussed as spiralized architecture of the smooth muscle see you can beautifully see how the smooth muscle fibers are um, put in a spiral uh, design around the mucous membrane next note the signature point remember i told you smooth muscle is is very very important but then smooth muscle is there in the bronchus also smooth muscle is there in the lower areas also terminal bronchiole and in very very small quantities in respiratory bronchiole etc but the point is this bronchiole stands out in its architecture primarily because there is no cartilage and there are no glands you see the serum mucous glands about which we mentioned uh, in the previous uh, video of the bronchus intrapulmonary bronchus is missing so no cartilage and no glands are two important signature features by being not present it gives you a uh, accreditation towards identifying the uh, bronchiole and incidentally all along the tracheobronchial tree you will invariably find a blood vessel an artery or, or a vein uh, in the immediate vicinity because the tracheobronchial tree carries with it the um, pulmonary um, blood vessels that's very very important so it is not unusual to find an artery in its immediate vicinity that's about the bronchiole that's why it's important the muscle that is there in the bronchiole is very very important particularly when it becomes hyperactive in in bronchial asthma i mentioned a few conditions which contribute to reduction in the lumen reduction in the lumen particularly at the time of uh, expiring the air uh, can uh, bring down the functional efficiency of the system we will go into it a little uh, more detail in the next few slides 
but then once the bronchiole is completed the the last part of the bronchiole is the terminal bronchiole thereafter that means next stage respiratory bronchiole and subsequent branching is uh, is different from here because up to terminal bronchiole is the conducting part of the airway beyond the terminal bronchiole it is the respiratory part of the airway that means respiration by the word respiration the exchange of gases begins from the respiratory bronchiole downwards next the epithelium in the case of the terminal bronchiole is not pseudo stratified ciliated columnar it is simple cuboidal this is very very important to remember then although it is cuboidal it's definitely lesser in thickness than compared to its corresponding uh, epithelium in the bronchiole or higher up but still not thin enough to permit gaseous exchange for gaseous exchange the the uh, thickness of the epithelium has to be very very low cuboidal or preferably flat cells that means a simple squamous that is absolutely essential now this is an important point to remember as far as the terminal bronchiole is concerned then terminal bronchiole down that means the respiratory bronchiole and the rest of the bronchial tree down that area that means supplied by one terminal bronchiole and all the respiratory bronchioles below that that area or that volume is called a pulmonary acinus that is a well, roughly it's a functional unit of uh, um, the lung it's a functional unit. in fact the base of this pulmonary acinus you can you can actually see it as a as a lobule you can even see it on the surface of the lung as a small um, area hexagonal area one terminal therefore concluding one terminal bronchus and the volume of the lung aerated by it is a pulmonary acinus now a few points relating to pathology may be useful to understand the physiology better now this lining epithelium uh, the bronchus bronchiole uh, here what happens is in the event of uh, you know chronic smokers because of continuous irritation this lining epithelium is uh, lost that means loss of cilia is very very uh, dangerous in addition what was originally at the most a single layer or maybe a pseudo stratified pseudo double layer becomes stratified that means the epithelium becomes multi layered and there is no cilia well the loss of cilia is really really dangerous because it is a compromise on the ciliary current a powerful mechanism or a contrivance by which carbon particles and other foreign bodies are thrown out uh, uh, higher up into the trachea and through a cough reflex out of the body now that is under a compromise that's a, that's a very important point you must you must remember smokers lung it's not only that continuous smoking chronic smoking this squamous change what we call as a squamous metaplasia that means replacement of the normal pseudo stratified ciliated columnar epithelium by squamous epithelium stratified squamous it's more dangerous because it can progress to squamous cell carcinoma so that's another very very dangerous uh, pathology expected now as i told you beyond the terminal bronchiole it's the respiratory bronchiole and its branches we will discuss this in a separate video uh, with more detailed focus now let me come back to the pathology this is a clinical point the spiralized architecture which is which was really useful in a physiological sense becomes really dangerous in a pathological sense because in the event of bronchial asthma or uh, maybe let's say allergy is the cause there is an hypersensitivity of the entire mucosal epithelium and the structures in the vicinity as a result the smooth muscle is put into an unusually high state of bronchoconstriction you see it is put into an unusual state of bronchoconstriction 
initial stages no major pathology may be seen but as the disease progresses and turns uh, really repeatedly coming up then the hypertrophy of the airway smooth muscle will be seen and uh, bronchiolar constriction will reduce the lumen next mucus production increases because there is a allergic uh, reaction going on as a result excess mucus production can be expected this mucosal thickening adds further to reducing the luminal uh, size i have already told you in the earlier stage of this discussion that bronchoconstriction itself can reduce the lumen considerably added to it uh, the uh, throwing up of mucus into the um, lumen can add it i also give you a third pathological addition the blood vessels will dilate and there will be local edema adding to the problems so these are some of the important features you should keep in mind in a in a discussion on bronchial asthma therefore here is actually a slide of bronchial asthma mucosal inflammation hyper secretion and pooling of mucus in the lumen edema and the thickening of the mucus increased vascularity of the uh, connective tissue immediately below the mucosa that means uh, about the part below the basement membrane uh, the lamina propria component of the mucosa hyper hyper responsive smooth muscle uh, that that spiralized muscle i told you with bronchoconstriction and this all results in partial airway block this is particularly exaggerated during expiration that's why bronchial asthma cases will have difficulty in expiring the air because the air is partially trapped because of this pathology i think that should be enough at this stage to have a a, a little um, look into the bronchial asthma this only helps you to understand uh, the general architecture for a normal histology next maybe you can remember there are other identifying features in asthma um, you will see in the mucosa uh, in the lumen these kind of uh, birefringent crystals slender needles birefringent needles of uniform shape but variable length and width consisting of two hexagonal pyramids joined base to base these are known as carcut laden crystals similarly the um, mucus plugs turn into um, spiral shaped mucus plugs can be seen in the lumen uh, these are from the subepithelial mucus uh, glands uh, they are thrown out they are also uh, important identifying or uh, adding pop features for a bronchial asthma case it's called the crushman's spiral now that was a overview of the normal physiology of a bronchiole and its comparison to a, an important pathological uh, disease the bronchial asthma we have seen uh, the bronchi into contrasting situations so i hope this overview will help you understand the bronchial both in normal as well as in diseased uh, condition thank you and wish you all the best